it's Sunday, December 10th, or Jan December, January 10th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Interpreted Lake, the episode number 585. And it's kind of messy, apparently. Also, it's snowing here in, in Texas, so if I'm looking this direction, it's because I'm enjoying the snow. So. And snow. it's beginning to snow. Ooh. Yeah, that well, or you could just say I'm looking at, at at Damon because he's he's kind of in that direction in the frame. So <laughs> there you go. So. See, you didn't even have to tell anybody. You could have just alluded to the fact that you were uh -huh. constantly paying uh -huh. attention to that host. Yeah. Uh -huh. and you could I, have. I just need to kind of look down to to, to <laughs> look at Gary. Now it would have been awkward if once you stick your tongue out to like catch a snowflake. <laughs> well, then I would have to go outside in order to even do that. So, yeah. You know, so, so I'd be off camera at that point in time. It's like, I'll be right back. Gotcha. Catch his snowflake. Also, I, I I just realized I forgot to get green chilies for my taco soup. So that's what I'm doing after show, and I'm putting it into my taco soup later. Lovely. Anyways, moving on. So I. Mm hmm. Are we messy? I'm totally missing something. So I need you guys to kind of catch okay. me up because I have no idea where this came from. It, it, I mean, there are things that have been messy in the United States of America this past week. Well, but I don't think that's what you were referring to. Well, it is in a way, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it all connects. Um, it's a one big circle. Uh, but. No, so like what I was writing, <laughs> sort of to describe the topic, uh, I was saying, you know, from circuit parties and secret orgies to Puerto Vallarta New Year's fallout, <clears throat> what do we think of the quote unquote misbehavior of members of our very own community? So, hey kids, welcome to All Tea No Shade. We need a sound <laughs> for that, damn it. Um, just a fan flap? Just like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, is there some sort of weird sudden image of just with his tongue going out of frame at his window and reappearing in Damon's? <laughs> that would take a long trip. That would that would take uh, interdimensional travel. Sure. Yes. I mean, I mean the, the the way you really do that is that there's somebody else on the other other uh, at Damon's place who would who would actually be doing yeah. it. I like may, may, or or you could get like that that whole like like uh uh, uh prosthetic tongue or something uh, uh, but somebody would still have to kind of like push it into frame <laughs> well i go uh... i'd have to do like my apologies to everyone for the thing. distraction and derailing um <clears throat> so let's yeah. let's go back to um, oh heck, I don't even know really where to where to start. Well, the reality is, so the LGBTQ plus community has been struggling with self identity and self policing mm -hmm. for quite some time because before we came into our collective consciousness um, as a as a larger grouping of a chosen family, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, prior to, I would say like the 1960s per mm -hmm. se, like everyone was, if there was such things as group, you know, groups, um, lesbians, gay men, trans individuals, um, you know, uh, any, any pick a letter, we were kind of siloed, I think. And then we started coalescing and coming together and realizing that there's strength in numbers. So then we do things and we, you know, get to change the course of human history or, or the future. And so we, you know, can change laws and, you know, be more comfortable and open and free and, you know, overall improve human society. That said, there are some uh, people, some individuals, some members of the community that behave in certain ways that <clears throat> don't reflect on the whole. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what this, this topic is mostly about. And so the most recent thing is 2020. <laughs> Uh, we were mm -hmm. 
we were we were prior to 2020 living some of our best lives we yeah. were out we mm-hmm. were we were having a kiki honey we were we were partying we were having fun we were traveling we were doing things we were spreading dna as far as we could <laughs> i mean fair mm-hmm. i mean either over a tummy over cakes <laughs> inside whatever <laughs> <clears throat> but a lot of that came, you know, not to, I want to say a screeching halt, but uh, if we were, if we couldn't drive 55 and we were busy doing 75, 80 um, here in the US, we call it miles per hour, um, you know, for speed, everything really kind of downshifted like into first gear. And mm-hmm. so there wasn't, there wasn't much outlet for our energies and stuff. And some people decided Despite the odds, the statistics, the news, um, the 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 science, they were still going to do things that they used to do, um, kind of in a uh, come what may, have no fucks, like whatever kind of attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, don't tell me what to do. I'm my own individual. You know, so I have a right to party. I have a right to do whatever. Yeah. And over the past year, we've discussed a lot of these like different things about navigating the world with COVID-19. And <clears throat> this is really, I think, part of where it comes from, you know, but we're, we're finding more and more that people are getting called out on their shit because they make decisions and uh, the, those that it reflects on, even though we're not directly connected to them, are kind of getting bent out of shape about it. Yeah. And, and go ahead, David. Well, I think, and I think it's necessary. Um, I think it's necessary to call some people out on this shit. Um, I, I get it. And this is all to no shade. I get it. You want to get your, your rocks off. You want to enjoy life and you want to get out there and do things again or keep doing things even though you know you really shouldn't, you know, because of what's going on with COVID and what's going on in the world, um, but you're gonna you're gonna do it anyway, and that's the part that has always bothered me. So if you get caught doing it, like we need to start calling these people out on it. You know, it's it's because it's it especially, and I'll just own it, like especially when it is like high profile LGBTQ people. Mm. Like, especially that, you know, one of the things we were going to discuss, there's um, with the um, recent, you know, New Year's Eve kind of celebrations and traveling, Gary and I know of three um, RuPaul's Drag Race queens who went to Puerto Vallarta. We all heard about that, what happened there with the, the ship sinking and all that shit. But there were people partying in Puerto Vallarta and there's video capturing two of them in the party a very big party with a bunch of people around who are obviously not all from the same household let's just call it what it is and <laughs> i mean if all those bitches live together i, a, I don't i don't that's know pretty packed house. that's a big ass house that's a pretty fucking packed house but they're all kind of living they're all coagulating that's a good word just wrong <laughs> and um there's no not a mask in sight. They're dancing around. They're listening to music. They're you know partying and whatever, and they're just. I mean, they're there. You know, clearly there. It's not a like they're hidden. They're not like off on the side. It's they're kind of almost in the middle of the action. And again, no mask. Everyone's there's no social distancing at all. Everyone's pretty much jam packed next to each other. They're moving and dancing and gyrating, whatever. And like, how is that okay? There's still a pandemic. There's still, a, you know, it's still rampant. There's still people dying. And we, you know, people need to call these people out and they need to be held responsible for their actions. If, if they had said something, because we know these two, they live, they actually apparently live together or they have been at least this past year. Um, if they immediately went home and then quarantined for like 14 days, like, okay, like I might 
be kind of okay with that. But I don't, as far as I know, we've not heard that they've said anything. <clears throat> well, I think they're being crucified. Yeah. I mean, so they're, they're, they're kind of laying low um, in a way. And I and, think, and I, I think this, go on, sorry. Um, I'm just going to, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I think the struggle is is that dichotomy, like that that polar opposite um, situation. I think some of the criticism is coming from individuals who are like, I am sacrificing my life. I am not going out. I am not being around people. I am not partying. Like, I'm not even seeing family members. Like, I'm working from home. Or, bitch, I don't even have a job because of this, like, pandemic that's going on. Um, and so I think there's 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 that side of things that people are like who the fuck do you think you are to mm -hmm. go out and hoop it up like that's that's one thing and then the second thing is you're not even taking mitigation measures for safety mm -hmm. like you're not masked you're not six feet apart you're as you said not in your household um yeah. you know you're you're definitively acting like the world is not a fire that the U.S. currently is seeing somewhere between three and four thousand deaths a day. Mm -hmm. um, and this has been a rough week mm -hmm. here in the U.S. at least. Correct here here yeah. in the U.S. Um, I'll just say it this way: because of the things that happened on January sixth in our nation's capital. Mm -hmm. We are having a reckoning that has been, I'm in the camp, I'll say it this way, I personally am in the camp of this has been a long time coming. Yeah. I have seen several posts online that have said, if you have wondered why for the past four years, people of color, uh, the LGBTQ community, women, like these populations have been like unhappy and trying to call out behaviors it's because we've seen it coming yeah because we've seen how it has been slowly progressing and building so we are not surprised yeah. by what took place um because we have seen the threat like closing so in so many it. times yeah like i will say it shook me um i was at, i mean i was working and it was it got to the point where I had to like step away from like Facebook and Twitter mm. and 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 most social media for most of the day because it was I was constantly checking my phone and my like it, like my personal like oh shit was like through the roof because it was it was just so weird a situation mm -hmm. yet like you said it felt like it was it was gonna happen. Right. Um, and I'll just be blunt and honest. This is all Tino Shade. I have a feeling it's going to happen again because they haven't, they're not, the country is not doing enough to, to make those that were responsible for it pay for it, as it were. Well, I and, think there's a, I think there's a big difference in like how you can um, rectify or address such an, a long ongoing situation. Sure. I, I don't. I, I the, that's the. I think that's part of the problem is is that it was a dimmer switch that was used, and it's going to take something like that to go in the other direction. It it wasn't a, you know it wasn't a standard on off light switch you know like mm -hmm. that you just like flip it and all of a sudden there's an insurrection. <laughs> like that's yeah. that's not yeah. how that how that works. And so yeah. as part of that, you know, there's so much frustration and of you know individuals doing things people not having um you know unemployment benefits paid to them people mm -hmm. you know uh just trying to just trying to live in a standard day-to-day -day, um rinse and repeat mm -hmm. kind of you know thing and then when you see individuals that are going and doing stuff yeah. celebrities celebrities going to mar-a-lago for mm -hmm. new year's mm -hmm. um you know, and uh, so as an as an aside, but sort of an example, it's not even necessarily members of our own community. It's people that we in our own community 
um, have put on a pedestal in a way. Like, so Taylor Dane, who mm -hmm. some say has a career because of the gays, mm -hmm. goes to Mar a Lago. Yeah. And the gays are like, bitch, what? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, it's. Why are you sleeping with the enemy? Yeah. It's becoming. It's. I mean, I think a lot of us have been dealing with it, especially this year, with, you know, being at home and, and being on social media and COVID and everything else. Like, we had to call our friends out in some ways. Some of us had to call our friends out about some of the, way, the ways they've been saying and doing things. Some of us had to leave friends behind and cut them out because of some of the shit that has been going on and their feelings being expressed against things um that we personally feel like why aren't you on board with it why are you not supporting it when it's a part of your history and your culture that you know you know uh, protesting and rioting and things like that were like kind of your history but when it's a black lives matter you know protest and riot it's suddenly a, a, a big deal suddenly a big changer because it's it's you know property damage and all that stuff and then i mean i can't tell you it surprised the fuck out of me the number of friends that i had that were actually trump supporters and they were they were lgbt like it 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 surprised me um, um i had other you know i have friends and I had other friends that were supporters and I've literally cut them out because I don't I don't I don't support him I will say it now and I will say it till my day I don't support him I don't think he should have been president I think everything that has happened since then is partially to blame if not fully to blame directly to him and because of that you know what happened on on Tuesday I like we said was our Wednesday season was a long time coming but it, we all are sitting here like it's not a surprise. And the reason it's not a surprise is because we've seen it. We've seen the fanaticism of these, of these supporters over the years and how to the point of enragement they get over the smallest things. And he, he lost, okay? Like he lost, like point blank period. I don't know how many ways our times, our fashions, our votes, our recounts, or whatever we have to say to get that through your head, he lost. So, like, there, there's, there is nothing more you can do to change what has happened. History has been determined. He will be a one-term president. He lost. And I get that you disagree for reasons that have no basis in reality. But since you disagree, like just because you disagree doesn't necessarily mean it's right. And that's kind of the same way with these folks that are going out and going to these parties and, and not doing anything to, to socially distance or anything. If you don't believe in the virus and you don't think it's a thing, like that's, like, I, I don't understand how you can't with all the information and all the facts and all the science that is out there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, go ahead and go out and go to the parties and do what you do. And then don't be shocked or surprised if you suddenly get this disease and suddenly are going into the potential worst factors. But those of us who are doing what we can, as much as we can, to limit ourselves from catching it and getting it to others like don't again don't be surprised when we're sitting here like trying to tell you and trying to and fighting against you and canceling you and removing you from our lives because we don't need it and we don't want it and i don't need to hear your conspiracy theories about why it's important and or why you feel the need to do this that or the other Life needs to be on pause right now for everyone. Yeah. I until mean, until the virus is until the vaccine is is readily available to everone else and everyone has taken it and there's the herd immunity and all that stuff. Like life needs to be on pause. Mm -hmm. This is and, this is one of those things where it's like 
like this is this is not bear flu this is not kennel cough this it, this is something that's a lot more serious uh mm-hmm. and should be taken seriously there are precautions you can do to to help out with your your social social needs but you yeah. also have to realize that this is a very serious thing I don't actually expect that things will even get close to be normal, quote unquote normal, until next year, till 2020, because right now we need, and uh, hopefully President Biden will be able to help uh, get more vaccines out there, Mm -hmm. distributed so that people can, can be taken it and the and that uh, more people will be vaccinated. It's a slow roll right now, but hey, they just, they literally would probably less than a month have they actually come up with a viable vaccine and Mm -hmm. started vaccinating. Mm -hmm. So right now you have to, we're we're all in this together. And in fact, during the, the beginning of the, pandemic when at my job we were we were watching in order to find more stuff for us to do we were watching just basically uh, instead of just watching uh, uh blacked out uh airings and and such and live events we were also watching certain high profile stations such as the disney channel and there's a reason why i'm specifically calling it uh, just to make sure their schedules were being accurate. Um, and during that, they had a lot of promos from stars of Disney television shows talking to kids. Mm-hmm. And this is something that this message that they're giving to kids is also a message that us adults should be taking seriously. We're all in this together. Mm-hmm. We're all apart. We're all, uh, you know, uh, uh, relatively isolated, but we are still all in this together. This has to be a group effort in order to flatten the curve, which we tried to do, but then people were going insane because of it. And don't get me wrong, while it's not a me thing because, hey, I could live my entire life in my apartment and, and I'd be be totally fine you know going out every once mm-hmm, in a while mm-hmm. to, to grab some quick things like oh i forgot some green chilies for my taco soup mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, i need to run to the to the thing quickly yeah you know i could i could do that that's me <laughs> that's my psychology that's not everybody's psychology uh, so I can understand that the, this could be a problem the only thing is you also have to take things seriously you have to believe in science. You know, uh, I hate to say this, but but if if there is some sort of God dealing with things, he probably put this on a reason just to, you know, for population control, trying to <laughs> weed out the idiots who aren't believing in the science that he created. <laughs> well, I think one of the key factors that Were they some individuals... Them? in our community are frustrated by is that um, history is repeating itself. Mm. Like that we didn't learn from the past. So there's a couple prongs to this um, as you guys are, we're talking and I'm listening to you. So one of them is COVID-19 is a virus. Our community has come through to the other side of the HIV AIDS epidemic. It is not over, but in 2021, 2018, 2017, we established medicine that you can take that suppresses the the viral load to Mm non-detectable. And that was something never thought possible in the beginnings when we are literally watching all of our chosen family die around us. Mm -hmm. So our community, especially MSM, might be just a little touchy about another virus like creating an epidemic and Mm -hmm. wiping out, you know, part of the human population because we've been on the receiving end of the vitriol and being held accountable for behaviors that helped spread something 
when there was not good information and it was mm-hmm. misunderstood and to be, you know, um, you know, kind of hung and quartered, you know, drawn and quartered in the, in the public square of opinion about our, you know, behaviors probably stings a little, you know, when you're back around to something happening. And so I think some members of our community who, who are more in touch with our history are like, okay, let's do right by this. Like, let's, let's calm our tits. Let's, you know, mm-hmm. chill it out. Cause we have science from decades of research on HIV that have shown us how we can take control of this and we can, we can do things to be better. So there's that. Mm-hmm. And it's not happening necessarily yeah. um, as well. And then, you know, you have other individuals who, you know, um, are not understanding how uh, how you can establish and create homegrown terrorism because you're, you know, missing key things that are taking place when scholars of history and um, politics and government and revolution and you know these things that happen in other countries and we have uh, blindly been going for decades saying you know oh well that'll never happen in the u.s mm-hmm. um, you know and people kind of forget things and one of the things i want to mention when you guys were talking just now it reminded me of how when i was in college i had studied a little bit on the holocaust and the lgbtq communities affected by that and why the pink triangle has was i don't think it really is as much anymore you know a symbol of the gay community because it was actually a patch placed on your uh prison clothes i don't even want to call it mm-hmm. a uniform um when you were in a concentration camp and it signaled you out and there were all sorts of different colors different positions of the triangle they represented different things but you were basically branded for the uh inappropriateness that was deemed by the ss regime and so you know we we've lived through this history of of these things that have happened and there is a a rather famous i say famous but if you don't know it then it's not that famous um poem that has like short and long versions but there's a german lutheran pastor um, his name is martin niemoller who basically said the following first they came for the socialists and i did not speak out because i am not a socialist then they came for the trade unionists and i did not speak out because i am not a trade unionist and then they came for the jews and i did not speak out because i am not a jew and then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me and the concept behind that poem, the impact is to say is like, you have to speak up for the other people. You can't, you can't just focus on yourself only or mm-hmm. your little pocket, because if you do that, then everything falls apart. Like everybody yeah. ends up paying the price. And so I think that's part of this dichotomy about people calling other people out and being like, the hell are you doing? Yeah. Really, girl? So let's jump back to January 6th, January 7th, (laughs) January 8th, because it's now January 10th. And the gays calling out the other gays who are thirsting after one of the terrorists that's in the Capitol running around in, like, some of the worst Fred Flintstone cosplay. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Like, we can talk about that. Let's talk about that. So... Um, (laughs) I'm, I, and I'll say I am conflicted on this, and here's why. I will start with this. I do not condone the thirsting of people who are causing harm to other folks that are um, trying to, like, <laughs> take over government. Like, what, whatever. Um, that's, a, that's a no-go for me. I am on the other side of it conflicted because I understand that we, we as a community at times struggle with our hormones. So when you see a half naked body or whatever, and like it, it has some attributes that you're drawn to. I can, I can see why Mm -hmm. someone would, you know, objectify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but, 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 you know, come on. Yeah. Like I, How do I put this nicely? Can you? Um, No, I can't. Um, I understand. No shade. Here we go. I understand, like, thirsting. And I get it. Like, I can understand, like, the human form being, like, nice and and pretty and whatever. And that being your thing. But you know what? Like, maybe you keep those thoughts to yourself. 
Like, maybe you don't, like, post it on, like, your Twitter page and post a picture of him and be like, damn, he hot or whatever. I don't care that he fucked up the country is trying to fuck up the world, like, whatever. But damn, he hot. Like, fuck that shit. Like, don't, 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 like, like maybe keep those thoughts to yourself. Like, because reality is this man was part of a, a party of people who raided a U.S. building. <laughs> U.S. government building. Attempted to, mm-hmm. Yeah, U.S. government building and a, in, a, in an attempt to take over. They were not there to talk nice to the people. They were not there to, like, let's have a kiki and, and discuss our, our differences and maybe come to an agreement. There was no... Um, this was not a, like, conference... This was people taking over. These were people that were planning to, by the looks of what we've seen, like they had like cuffs, they had the gallows and things set up. They were Pipe they bombs. were out for they were out for blood. They were out to hold in a public forum mm-hmm. a non civil like representation yeah. of their of their frustrations. Yeah. This was not. Yeah. Let's sit down and have tea yeah, and, yeah. and biscuits yeah. Yeah. and have this it and just, talk it through. Yeah, this was not a. This was a insurrection. This was a. This was a coup. Yeah, it was, it this was, was literally this was, this labeled as an insurrection. So, like, I and get it, it that he pretty and all that, but like, we don't really. need to be thirsting after our enemies. That's like to me, that, like. I mean, we've seen it before, so many fucking times before. We know that there are people in our community that are negative and violent and awful and, you know, have been actually charged with things, like, that are, you know, awful. And still we thirst. I can't tell you how many times... I'm going to bring this up because I fucking... I hate it. I can't tell you how many times I have seen pictures of like Mr. Noodles and Beef show up on like random posts and someone has all almost every fucking time someone is like ooh who that like he pre- like 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 what <laughs> like if he right if you don't know their history if you yeah. don't know their stuff i would hope cuz i i haven't personally seen that damon so um but if i was to see that yeah. come up i would so immediately look for a comment thread because I would expect the call out. I would expect the clap back. Mm-hmm. I would expect yeah. people to be like, like, girl, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't know the history of XYZ. Mm-hmm. Um, because I have seen, you know, over the course of 2020, especially when it comes to politics, the gays calling out the other gays who are being supportive of, you know, these parties, these messages, these, you know, Things that are basically, you know, saying you are less than like, Mm -hmm. I don't care that he built. I don't care that he's thick. I don't care that he's got a big dick. You know, I don't care that he's dominant and he wants to, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. restrict me from movement and drill me until I pass out. Like, like all of those things are, you know, understandable in a certain context, but you cannot remove the behavior of a person from who they are, you know, like we talked about uh, cancel culture, you know, before from, you know, about when people fall, fall from a pedestal. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of circling back, you know, to, to that concept of, you know, when we look to people and we, and the thing is we give them their power, like we give them their position, especially celebrity. So when we mm-hmm. say get this individual, you know, has, x y you know factors about them and we really appreciate them for that it it goes both ways so yes you might very well call them out and be like what the hell are you doing Mm -hmm. with these people in this place at this time what makes Mm -hmm. you think that that's okay and what i find interesting is is that sometimes the individuals that are being called out turn around and say it's my life i do what i want like it's none of your damn business yeah and that's where (laughs) i'm surprised i'm invoking this RuPaul has infamously said for decades that her mother said, unless they pay in your bills, pay them no mind. Well, guess yeah. what, bitch? I kind of pay your bill. 
Yeah. Like, I watch your movie, I watch your TV show, I buy your album, like, I follow mm -hmm. you on Instagram, like, or whatever it is. Not really. Yeah. Uh, but, I, 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 yeah. Instagram. Yeah. But, I mean, it's like, you know, like, we, we collectively as the fandom or whatever, as your broader audience, support you. So mm -hmm. I have a right to call you ass out when I'm like, nope. No. Don't don't no. be thinking so. Um, yeah, it 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 again it it feels a certain way, and I I you know I was talking like like keep it to yourself is and I kind of feel that way, but also like why like don't like just just like take the whole person like get past the physical, like get past the physical it, and it, it's tough to do. Uh, it is tough to do. We understand. And, well, and I, it, right, because it takes so much concentration to divide between the two camps, right? Like, mm -hmm. if I'm scrolling through my Twitter feed and I see a hot, you know, like a short video, thanks, Twitter, um, <laughs> you know, and yes, that's some shady call out because they limit shit to like two minutes. Um, and since it's seven to eight minutes on average for a man to have an orgasm, <laughs> um, <laughs> um I have to watch one so, thing, then scroll to the next, or I have to repeat the, <laughs> the same thing over and over again. Struggle is real. Um, so <laughs> my point is, is like, you know, you're, you know, you, I don't care how you want to justify it. Separating a person in one aspect versus another is like on a personal level, you could do that. But if you share that, mm -hmm. if you are open about that, then guess what you are open to? The criticism. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you you are um, in the pocket of everyone having, you know, an option of an opinion, whether you like it or not. And that's how it works. You know, like there's all been all this discussion recently, which is cracking me up in a way, about, you know, First Amendment rights. Because... Some accounts on Twitter have been taken away, uh, as well as, like, suspension of Facebook things, Instagram. I saw a graphic the other day. I was like, dang, you got anything left you're allowed to be on? Um, oh. <laughs> so, you know, that that kind of stuff, you know, kind of has an impact. And what's cracking me up is especially, you know, people who are um, – uh, they're not scholars. They're just folks that are aware of things, and they're like, okay, so a, a, a public – technology platform is not the government so like you should learn yeah. your law you should learn your history like it is not an infraction of your first amendment rights that you can't say things because they took away your bullhorn mm -hmm. like that's that's kind of not how it um yeah yeah works and so like i have a quote on one of my email accounts uh that i found years ago that i like it it says remember people are watching you and we lead by example one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and it's attributed to Sam Parker. I don't know who Sam is. Probably a very nice person. Um, but I really like that idea of like in every moment, everything we do is an example to others, whether we like it or not. And there are moments that, yes, we make not very good decisions. Why? Because we're humans. Like mm -hmm. we're flawed. That's just how simple it is. You know, we are not perfect beings. So... If someone says something to you, it's feedback. Now, whether yeah. or not you want to take in the feedback is another thing. Um, Fair. You know, and I, I want to go back to uh, something that Dinton had said earlier because we said we were going to discuss it. Um, this is all kind of a part of the same stew mm -hmm. of issues. Um, there was a nurse, notably, uh, as Dinton points out, uh, a gay white male nurse who went on vacation. Um, got COVID, then had a fundraiser because of all the costs of their medical stuff, and then took the money apparently and went on another vacation. Now, I'm not drawing conclusions to draw together because I don't have all the facts that they used the money for the medical stuff to go on the vacation, but they did go on vacation again. Yeah. It's like, are you able to, to, to like, process what might have happened here i mean i know you're a nurse which means there's probably some exposure 
opportunities. Yeah. yeah, there's there's exposure risk. You know, I get that for but sure. You would think that as a nurse, you would understand these and take necessary precautions, such as not going on a fucking vacation, <laughs> staycation. Sure. You would think so, right? right. You would think well, so, right? Right. <laughs> You would think. Well, I'm not saying is... that this is the case. I'm just saying you would think the logical conclusion that you would probably try to come to through all of these different factors would be these. But this is where this is the struggle, honestly. Uh, like what it comes down to is it's the logic that we are applying that is not being used by the other individual. Mm -hmm. So I know people who, yes, work in uh, the broader health communities, I'm going to try to not reveal some details, that is a well-educated, well-informed individual and decided to go to Disney World mm. with a family during mm -hmm. a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And my mind was blown. And do mm -hmm. you know, if I was to try to engage them and have a conversation, I would fully expect them to say, I was educated and aware of all the risks and I made the decision because I thought it was in our best interest. Mm -hmm. That, that last part, it was in our best interest, as in self-centered focus. Mm -hmm. Like, we had planned this trip. I have a vacation. We are still going. Fuck the consequences and the world on fire around us is, is like a subtext I took out of it. They could mm -hmm. debate with me until they lose their last breath about like, you know, how I'm wrong. And I'd be like, nope, sorry, my, my I get to feel this way. Mm -hmm. It's how I interpret your behavior. You, yeah. you, don't, you don't get say over my opinion of you. Yeah. Sorry. Like, if you want to be better, do better. So don't take the vacation. Don't take the yeah. trip. Don't go to Florida. A hot spot of fucking COVID infection. Yeah. Like, Bad. I mean, just so what it comes down to, and, and it has been a lesson of reckoning for people, I think, in the past few years is just because people know better does not mean they do better. And Bad. we're all guilty mm -hmm. of it. Like, uh, yeah. Sh sh should I, you know, order out, you know, fast food stuff? Probably not. Do I? I probably Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Because yeah. of convenience, because of whatever, like, Mm -hmm. And and so those those micro decisions like don't seem to have big impacts, but the reality is they do. Sometimes it's long time coming. You know, I'm mm -hmm. a personal representation of this. Who knows what my health will be in another five years because of decisions I've made in the past. And that's part of where, you know, we've developed this whole immediate gratification concept now, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like, well, if it doesn't impact me directly in this moment or in the short term then I'm not going to yeah. pay attention to it. And that, yeah. to me, is so disturbing. Mm -hmm. So I'm just... Yeah, I mean... It, I'm gonna, I'm, so go ahead. I'm going to have ahead, a moment ahead. and say something. This this week has been hard. Controversial, you're brave. What? <laughs> Sorry. It, keep going. It's something that Trixie says all the, all the time. It's, I'm oh, going to say something that's controversial, yeah, yeah. you're brave. Anyway. No, it's not, it's not so much about controversial. Um... I'm just going to open up about the fact that I've had a real hard week psychologically this week because, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize, and I still haven't been able to figure it out since what's happened to, towards the beginning of the week with what happened in our, in our nation's capital. I think like I've been really struggling with like the world, like mm -hmm. my concept of what is right and what is wrong and what is just and what is um, acceptable and understandable and I feel like I've been inactive and I haven't been like participating enough or doing things and it, so it's a very conflicted feeling so um, the it becomes a huge struggle to be like does it even matter like the efforts that you're putting in because you feel like you're losing because things just people don't give a shit uh -huh. um, and I've talked recently openly with some some close people about like I think I'm now now in January <laughs> getting where people were in in May, June, July, August of last year because I've been busy working. I've been mm -hmm. working two jobs this entire time. I've like had my father to deal with. So I've been uh for lack of a better way to phrase it distracted. I've been mm -hmm. 
focused on very specific things and doing that stuff. So I haven't been cooped up in a home um, without a job or whatever, you know, to uh, pay broader attention, I guess, or internalize things. And so this week, there's an insurrection in my country. And then uh, someone I know gets out of the ICU and gets out of the hospital to go home. That person loses their mother to COVID. Mm -hmm. Another person loses their partner to COVID. Mm -hmm. um, this one loses a parent. This other one loses a longtime friend. And I don't know if it's just like the circumstance of my life this week, but it's starting to feel overwhelming, like the amount of people that are being impacted. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, and it and it and I think it's like it becomes very difficult because it feels soul crushing because you're like, do, like, are people not caring enough? Are they not? Is it not mattering? And I've been saying this for months and months and months on end to people like, I just don't think people are going to change behavior until it hits home, until it literally hits home. So I was like, what does it yeah. take? One in, one in 10 people getting it to die? Two in 10? Three in 10? Like, when do people start paying attention and realizing, like, the importance of it mm -hmm. and that we should take it seriously because, you know, and and my mind goes all over the place. I'm like, maybe people can't process. I get that. Like you become dumb to it. You don't understand it. Like you, you, you do not have an educational background, you know, that, that fortified you to understand science and the impact of things. So you just kind of go about your business, um, mm -hmm. not understanding politics and currency and commerce and science. And, you know, cause you, cause you have a life that is, um, uh, in a certain sphere. And do you know what you do? You get up in the morning, you go to work, you make money, you have a roof over your head, you have food, you raise a family. Maybe that's like the, the, the encompass of that. So it, it, it's very different for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. I think what broke my heart the most was to know somebody who posted I know, I'm paraphrasing, they said, I know it was wrong to get together with my family on Christmas. And now we're paying the price for it. Mm -hmm. And they have family members and a partner who is COVID positive. Yeah. And I'm just like, I... I, I'm I, I'm struggling because I'm like, I... Like, how, do, how does this compute... Like, yeah, uh, it's like it's you, been you have been warned, you have you have been told, you have seen things happening like this, and just because every other year you were able to do these things doesn't mean this year, this one year at least, if not next this next year, it 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 just you know that this is is happening and you still take that risk just blows my mind blows mm -hmm. my freaking mind yep. that 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 these are are the cases that that you're not taking the precautions that are being directed by the CDC the people who actually believe in science despite what the current president of the United States thinks yeah it's 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 baffling that people are willing to even take these risks to do this and when you look at the numbers it's compared to the entire time of this pandemic the holidays just destroyed everything yeah people were dying left and right there were more people getting covid positive and having to be hospital hospitalized i don't know about you but the only time i want to be in a ho hospital is if i like broke my leg for some strange reason you know slipped it, on it, ice you know it, you don't want to be in there for for you, you you don't want to be in the hospital for any reason for that matter the ideal yeah. thing would be that the that 
that the entire hospital staff is bored. Yeah. And so, sorry, David, I just want to say, um, I think the part, uh, that last individual I was talking about that, that is the struggle bus for me in this moment is I don't know you that well. Like we know each other. We've seen each other in person in real life. We're not that close, Mm -hmm. but I love this person. Mm -hmm. I love them for who they are, for their character, for their energy, like for their intelligence. And yet, yeah, like they said, I'm still going to do this. And, um, as a person who's not necessarily a spiritual in this aspect, it, it kind of makes me think of the concept of, you know, like loving the person despite whatever they've done, like, you you know? Yeah. And yeah. Go ahead. It, no, no, no. It like I will own. I made a few like choices this, you know, year. Like, well, I'll use the last four months as an example. Um, I went to Maryland to see a friend. Um, mm-hmm. We all I talked about that. Um, and then my brother came into town the weekend of Christmas. He came in and we went to go see him, and we went to dinner. We went out. Um, there is a person like every time I each time I did those, there was a f- feeling like in the pit of my stomach of guilt. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know why it was there, because as Jeff kind of mentioned, I know the potential consequences of that, or, or the potential consequences of that. You know, I could be and have been, I could have been a a negative caring, no, a positive caring person who was had is asymptomatic, and I went on a plane to Maryland, you know, and yes, me and AJ kind of pretty much stayed to ourselves, but we went out, you know, a few times. Right. So, you know, mask wearing, distancing, that that's that happened. I did the best that I could, mm-hmm. but I understand that could have been it. <laughs> like that could have been it. When I went to dinner with my my brother, um, me and Jim went, and we got to the restaurant. Well, we got to the hotel. He and it was the hotel was part of the restaurant. We got there. We you know met with him, and we were able to sit. Like there was, I mean, fortunately, you know, restaurant wasn't very popular. Um, it wasn't particularly busy. Um, so we pretty much were sitting by ourselves for a while. Now there were eventually people that came in and they were quite a distance away. The one that bothered me the most is I'm kind of like talking about this. There was a family of six or seven that were just like sitting. They were more than six feet away, but they were kind of all sitting at a table together. And it was just very interesting to me that they all came out and I'm wondering as we were leaving, as I walked past them, like, I get that you're all family, mm. but are you all like living together? Is this a, you know, are you in the same bubble? Like we keep talking right. about that, but, but are you just like meeting together? Cause this is like your after Christmas dinner kind of thing or whatever. And it was like, yeah, that could be a thing. And that could be a potential, like this small little hotspot right there as I walked past, as we left. Um, do I, I will, I personally feel like I've done what I could and I'm doing what I can. Like I'm working from home. I get to work from home. I'm happy that I've got a job, um, still. Um, and that's really all I do now. So every once in a while I get that feeling of like, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. And I am trying my best, honestly, to suppress it. Because until (laughs) vaccines are readily available for everyone, I just don't feel a need to constantly, like, do it, to constantly go out. I am spacing the things out a lot. (laughs) I will own that much. Going out this last week, 
Um, I had a doctor's appointment, but it wasn't until the 7th, which was about a week or two after um, going there. And then I kind of made a point to take a half day for work to go to the doctor's appointment so that I didn't have to do anything else. Mm. And that kind of helped to me, like, mitigate factors. But now I, I plan to not do anything for two weeks. Like that's kind of been my personal thing. Like if I do something, I'm going to self quarantine in a sense, right? To like try to, you know, hope that one, I don't get infected and two, I haven't infected someone else. I don't think I have, but I feel you Gary, like 100%, like how this is going and how this is happening. And, and I think really like i don't i don't think i feel like maybe it's just because it's been like the past few months really i've been noticing a lot that it has gotten the the for lack of a better phrase the noose of covid has gotten tighter and tighter around me Mm -hmm. i've had friends who have gotten it i've had family members who have gotten it and these aren't like friends across the country are friends, you know, far away. These are friends like nearby. Mm -hmm. These are friends that I have, that I've, you know, I've seen and hung out with. And, um, like my, I'm, I'm quote unquote lucky because my family is in Louisville and I don't have to worry too much about like being in contact with them, but we intentionally didn't have our Thanksgiving and, and Christmas because we realize that there are people in our family that are at high risk and it's best to just like not do it. I didn't travel because I knew better. Granted, I've done it before, but going this late with it in such an increase, I felt it was best to just stay home. Mm -hmm. Um, Having said all that, the fact that it's, you know, people aren't making good choices. We were talking earlier about like the two in in Puerto Vallarta. There's another, you know, third that was there. There's another drag race queen who is still doing shows um, and trying. And there are things out there, like I've seen it at least. There are still places doing events. And these aren't like outdoor, like everyone can kind of distance events. These are events in spaces. And I don't feel that's okay. Um, It's people are, and again, fortunately people are calling them out about it. Right. You know, um, the biggest problem for me and I love it, like is these are events that are happening in like hotspots. These are events happening in Florida. And it's just like, why, why do you feel a need to do this now, right? Why can't you wait? Why can't you just like postpone? Why can't you just give it some time? A a title is not that important. A contest is not that important. A a a party is not that important right now. Like it's just not. And the more we keep pushing for things to try to get back to normal, the further and further and further away that normalcy that we can potentially have is gonna keep going. Right. I have friends who are planning an event, going to an event in August of this year. And I don't know, like here we are in January. Yes, we have a vaccine, that's great, but we, we know that the vaccinations are slower than they were planning. They're mm-hmm. slow in getting done. So, like, I don't think them going to that event in August is going to happen. Mm. And that's August. <laughs> As I said, I don't. I don't think that we're going to be clear for the until next year, twenty twenty two. It's going to get better as people get vaccinated, but. 
it's it's going to be some time. We're we're all in this together. We just need a slower roll, get through it, and eventually we'll be able to get back to relative normalcy. And I think uh, what we have been learning through this experience that is that is having some some consequence and is having some cost, some negative cost, um, is if you want to do a, a comparison between other countries in the U.S., the lockdown mitigation measures in other places have been more effective. The response has been more collective uh, on the same side. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a lot of like ways to debate this and, and you know criticize it and, and pick it apart and all that kind of stuff. But when we have a country that's founded on individual liberties and freedoms, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. And the other way it slices is if everybody has an individual right and we take that and we mm -hmm. carry that torch, then that means that we, we also reap when 300 plus million people all want to do their own thing, their mm -hmm. own way versus a collective embrace and a and a like a group cohesion that everyone that that most people I don't want to use everyone that you know that the that the majority or whatever come together and say okay let's do this right like let's let's lock it down let's do the thing do you know what I mean and mm -hmm. let's get through this and there was a little bit of that in the beginning and then fatigue set in I think and people yeah, yep. just kind of moved on from that and so i feel like you know we have this culture war um of some kind that's happening you know in which people are really at odds because they're they're on they're finding themselves on one side of the situation versus the other mm -hmm. uh, regarding how they choose the things that they do and that they don't want to do um you know like i have i have lots of people I have really not seen in a long time. And maybe that's a part of, you know, where I've been feeling um, vulnerable this week is I just haven't been able to be around people. Like, you know, there, there's all these different um, buckets that we have as, as an analogy and they hold so much. And part of the concern or the issue is, is that these containers are depleting over time and we're not able to replenish them. So as an example, intimacy is a like container. And if you don't, you know, if you're not intimate with other people, then it, it kind of gets diminished and eventually dries up. Um, and it's not to say that you can't replenish it, but that's something that people, you know, have one of, you know, these variables. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's, that's, Part of the issue, you know, is that people, if, you know, I'm using this analogy about these, you know, um, buckets and these things that, you know, we fill up with, if we're not able to replenish them, if we're not able to fill them, you know, and they're depleting, and we're kind of aware of that, maybe on, on a subconscious level, I can understand behaviors that are meant to refill them because it's overwhelming that we don't have the, like, the, the quote-unquote normalcy of the things that we did that took care of this in, in the week-to-week, month to month or whatever. Um, you know, like when we recapped 2020, I was thinking, I was like, I did not really go anywhere or do anything. Like, for probably, oh my gosh, 18 months? Like, it wasn't just 2020, it was, you know, kind of prior to that i thought of this yesterday just as like a as a weird insight to how my brain works um i was for some reason thinking about like the next time i have sex with somebody and if they ask the question or it comes up like it kind of the the you know um what do you call that uh the negotiation no 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 no. well that's part of it um when you're kind of turn trying to turn somebody on jesus what the hell do we call that flirtation uh, yeah but there's a different word for it um, oh, 
I know we're talking about it, but I can't remember the word now, too. Fuck you. <laughs> when you're trying to turn somebody on and you're like getting in the groove and in the moment, oh my God, my brain is failing me. Um, no, it's not so much seduction. Uh, I want to call it a preface, but it's not a preface. Um, <laughs> foreplay? Anyways. Okay. What? Foreplay? Okay. Yes. Oh, good lord. <laughs> I was going to say go. pregame. I was like, I'm, I'm struggling. Like, anyways, in the foreplay of the it's moment. It's been that you... long, y'all. First off, there's consent. Broken sex brain. Um, right, right. But in the, but in, and part of foreplay is communication, right? And having a discussion. And if in the foreplay, it's brought up about the last time you had sex, I realize, like, one, that's going to be a conversation a lot of people are having. Two, there's going to be, like, there's going to be this time gap issue. Like, I have not been intimate in X number of months, like whatever. And for me, I was like, I can't even remember. Mm. And that's not, and that's not like, uh, I mean, it could be a little bit of, of, you know, my brain be broken, but I mean, seriously, I was just like, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Like, and that's so there, there's going to yeah. be a lot of stuff for us to like process and to deal with. Um, I mean, yeah. true, true, T, like, I mean, especially if, you know, for example, you're, you know, you don't really, you're not really intimate except for like at events, as mm. an example. Like you right. don't really go out until you go to an event, you're not doing anything. That's a, pretty much a year, like probably in a month. Like the last event I went to was at AB in February 20, okay. 2020. Like that's, I mean, not saying that I've not been intimate, like let's, let's not get it twisted. Like, right. but like, but February, 2020 was for many, I mean, not for many of us, but for the bear community in particular, that was one of the last events you may consider TBRU until they canceled it mid March, but well, that was one of the they biggest. They canceled it day, it, during yeah. day one of the actual event. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, people could have gotten their freaky deke on like, sometime during TBRU. But that's kind of the last bear event that I remember happening. Well, like, that's not true. I've, I've heard of other things happening, but they've mostly been at like gay, camp, uh, gay campgrounds and stuff, which I'm, um, I get that they're outside, but mama, please. Um, I get that it's a campground. <laughs> ah! All right, so here's the Altino shade, bitches. An <laughs> orgy in the woods is still not a safe activity. It's still an orgy. It's still it's, an orgy. It's still an orgy, close an orgy is an orgy, whether it's in, in the woods or inside. And, and I'm and sorry. I doubt you're wearing a mask while you're getting the freaky deek on. Right, I'm right. just going to say you, that. You <laughs> can tell me. You can tell me how hot it is that this guy's walking around in just some boots and a mask on his face. But, like, sure, if 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 anal play is the thing that's going on, or it's just you know, um, like masturbation, I guess. Like, but no, mm. girl. Like, you can't no. convince me, you no. know. And trust, I have been a manager of a business that was a location for such activities, so mm -hmm. I am not like out of my realm to imagine like the things that happen. I have been a witness. Mm -hmm. Possibly a participant. Um, mm -hmm. You know that that things happen, and sometimes they are in small collective groups. And yes, they can be outdoors, but there can also be other things. And I think what some people don't realize is, the more physical you are, there's more exertion, and your respiration goes up, like the force with which you, you know, expel air. Mm -hmm. So if you're a person who's verbal, um, mm -hmm. whether whether you know you uh, are forming full words or sentences, or just grunting and groaning, like right, mm -hmm. like, and some people do it to put on a show, and others, um, it's just the nature of who they are. So mm -hmm. if the whole motherfucking campground can hear how much you're enjoying being dicked down, girl, mask isn't gonna help. No. no. And being no, outdoors no. is not going to help. Like, it, no. like, it's spreading around. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it, it's it's kind of strange it, it, to me because I've been thinking about this in terms of the MSM community. With my job now, um, uh, 
working with HIV stuff is before the, the HIV AIDS epidemic, the MSM community kind of was going through this renaissance um, where a lot of people would say like it was almost hedonistic, like like any man anywhere could hook up with any other man anywhere. Like, you know, cruising was the thing. Like you yeah. could just walk down the street, walk past somebody, give them a look. And the next thing you know, the closest bathroom alley, like whatever semi-public or semi-private space is yeah. like where y'all are like, you know, um, mm -hmm. exchanging your DNA. Mm -hmm. So, and then the then the pan or sorry the epidemic comes and it takes a few years and then the whole culture of the community changes and people are scared to yeah. even touch each other. Yeah. So now we move to you know the the twenty tens and we make all these advances in medicine and people are starting to I, I guess I want to say rebound and they feel like oh I can pop a pill once a day. I'm safe, I'm good. And it's like, well, yes and no. no. Yes, you are safe because you could be undetectable and you could, you know, potentially not, you know, um, come into contact with a strain that, you know, is resistant and like you can you can have fun. However, no, because bitch, HIV ain't the only thing out there. So yeah. like, you know, you, you want to get yourself some gonorrhea, some syphilis, you know, some chlamydia, some, you know, all sorts of nasty other stuff because that's still there. You know, you want genital warts? Um, I mean, yeah. like, sorry. Well, there's there's I all mean, those yeah, things I going mean, on. Yeah. So, like, I, I think that you know, part of the struggle for us as a community is like we we feel like in the past probably five years or more we have been making strides in like coming back into our own. Like, yeah. uh, I'm gonna really inappropriately say a comment. We have been reclaiming our time. Mm -hmm. We have been saying. Uh, we are here, we are queer, and we are going to celebrate it. So we, you know, end up with marriage uh, equality. We yeah. have, uh, you know, we have made all these strides for representation, for um, being recognized that we authentically exist and that we deserve to have our own uh, space just like anybody else. And with yeah. that comes all of these behaviors about being free and being open and being out and and we don't know how to put the brakes on that yeah and we probably don't like the idea of slowing down or shifting gears and moving you know into a safer kind of mode of things and saying oh perhaps just perhaps we should not you know do this that yeah. or the other which brings me back to, you know, this idea, you know, that um, our community is, you know, being messy because some members, I don't, I don't mean the whole community, but like, you know, especially like we said, higher profile people make some decisions, do some things, you know, and it's discussed and found out or publicized, you know, and, um, and I don't know if I want to phrase it this way. It's kind of like we've suddenly all turned into TMZ, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we're, we're putting other people's business out there. But as we said earlier, like, well, you know, we we gave you this this position and we're not happy with how you behave in or what, you know, what you're doing or representing with that. And, and where do we want to go? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I I had two other questions that are, are more uh, just things to think about, which is, you know, how much criticism is fair? Um I think there's a certain point where, you know, I feel like people are going to criticize others and criticize them and criticize them until they get the point. Mm -hmm. You might run out of breath, girl, because mm -hmm. if, if they're that deeply dug in, they're not going to concede that they yeah. made a mistake or they were wrong. Yeah. Or I think um, I actually made a very good comment about that. You know, you said, um, I think a lot of people are feeling that way, just kind of. Quote, I get the feeling, I get to feel this way and I'm not accepting what you're feel, telling me because you're clearly not, clearly you're not taking it all, in all that's happening around you. Like it is, that is, I think that's part of it. Like I can't tell you how many times um, on the apps you get like hit up on, on like, like what you do and you want to fuck around. Like it's like, like, dude, like I don't even know your name. Like, <laughs> Like, I don't know what you got 
and I mean, I'm not talking like just the STI thing, but like COVID is, is, is a real thing to kind of like think about in regards to right now. Mm-hmm. So like literally letting too many people in without any kind of real like discussion or, or, you know, hell fucking testing and all that stuff. Like that's potentially problematic. Um, Cause and and to, to to the higher point of like criticisms, like I've, I feel like we need to say things, you know, we've been, I've had friends that have talked about it all the time. Like, I'm not, I'm not hooking up. Like, I'm not, like, I've seen like many of my friends are kind of saying that in general. Um, and I am appreciated, appreciative of those people. And I'm also appreciative of the, to kind of go into the celebrity kind of faction, those celebrities that are have taken hiatuses from like porn and things like that for the sake of um, protecting themselves and protecting others. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people out there that are still going out there and doing what they do. We we we've seen the OnlyFans and just for fans for people that are like whatever. Like I I'll still hook up and it's it kind of gets. Some people are getting called out on that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's appropriate because I get it. We uh, horny fuckers. Like, we, you know, there are people out there that are just like, they, they, they're missing that connection, how short or brief or whatever it may have been. And there is that strong desire, but I think you need to make the decisions for yourself on what you're risking in doing it, mm-hmm. what the possibilities there are. Um, that person might be fine today, but will they be fine tomorrow? If this is just a hookup with a no strings attached hookup kind of thing, and you don't get their name, you don't get their information, and you don't know who they are, and you suddenly get sick or they get sick, how are they going to contact you? Like maybe you might be lucky and you talk to each other through an app, and you might be able to like send a message and say like hey dude like i got covid like right like maybe you want to get tested or opposite you know but how sure are you of that like how how sure can you potentially be of that right and and there's um all the all the effects the ripple effects are the things that play out from that um so as an example if you know say someone is on their way to go visit family for whatever the reason is um, and they have to travel and on the way while traveling they have a hookup and they find out later that they're you know positive for covid um and the person they hooked up with was you know within the period where they you know exposed them mm-hmm. um because maybe they were asymptomatic or whatever you know do you have the ability to reach out to them and talk to them or let them yes. know um, mm-hmm. I mean, and this happens in, in STD stuff all the time. You know, it's like uh, no one, hardly anybody, I'll say it this way, wants to be the one to tell another person, hey, remember when we had fun? So I didn't know that, <laughs> dot, 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 um, you know, that I have, you know, fill in the blank and may have exposed you. Um Nobody wants to do that, mm-hmm. you know. I, don't, I, I keep saying nobody, but you know, I guess somebody might. Um, so I think it's few and far between that people want to have that kind of a conversation, even if you're well educated and you know, and blah blah blah, and it's maybe your job and you day, do it day in and out. Uh, you know, it, it's different. You know, to take it is. It's difficult to take ownership and responsibility over what you do, and to um, do something with it. You know, so. Um, my last question was, you know, kind of, can we do better? I believe we can, mm-hmm. but it's individual choices. And if there's enough of them that make a, a, a majority, um, then there's potential, you know, that things can, can be different. Um, you know, and, and I, you know, so one of the things I was talking about earlier that I think is a, a challenge is whether or not people are aware of our history as a community and how we have tried to overcome that history to be better as a collective um, 
you know, to not do the same things that have happened before, to not like bring focus and attention and negative consequences to actions. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, I do think it's a, it's, it's a challenge. It's, you know, a battle of individual, uh, you know, focus versus the, the broader um, aspect of things. So I don't think that there's necessarily an easy answer to it. Um, No, I I think, you know, taking stock in the moment and saying like, is this, is this a responsible thing to do? Um, You know, what, what are the potential outcomes of it is a good way to handle it, but it's very difficult, you know, Mm -hmm. because how many of us are like, Ooh, I could go for some ice cream and take, take stock of the moment and say, should I have just one scoop versus the whole pint? Like Mm -hmm. we have biological drives, you know, uh, mechanisms and it's kind of like you know and so yeah it's not surprising someone would mindlessly eat the entire pint because it tastes good like that's why we ate it hello yeah um (laughs) so to me this is i can't believe we're doing this like the analogy is you know that your actions for you know ice cream are just as fair and honest and realistic as anything else that you want to do whether yeah. it's, you know, sex with other people or, you know, doing things in, in, uh, around others or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I will admit I I am, I am, miss, I, someone asked me today, how are you feeling? And one of the things I kind of said was, I am missing people. Like, I, I am missing people. And um, I think that's a, a fair, you know, a you know, feeling and a fair, you know, thought to have. Um, someone who like me is pretty f- like a social butterfly of such. I'm I'm mm-hmm. missing the interactions and going to events and going out to things. And while I appreciate these, you know, moments like this and and talking and such, I'm. It's similar, but it's not the same. Right. And um, I could understand the desire to go out and go to events and go to parties and have parties and, you know, schedule parties and all those kind of things. But I, I know personally that I'm, I'm not going to go. I just don't feel safe. Like I just don't like any decision Jim and I have made in regards to doing anything has been a, I have to like really think about like the risk factors. I really do think about it. I can't just make the decision on the fly. I'm not just going to go out and do something um, just because. Um, so to those who have gone out and done these things and gone to events or are planning your events, this whole Puerto Vallarta thing like just was, it was yet another like blow, I think in general to the to the to the overall feeling you know we've talked about new year's i don't know how many people went out for new year's but we'll probably be here in the next week or so hearing about the repercussions of that mm-hmm. um in the numbers and everything else same with and i'm just going to be honest like same with the insurrection on the sixth like there were a bunch of people there were a lot of people and without not a whole lot of mass not a whole lot of masks. So I feel right. that's going to be another like super spreader event. Like, and they're going to like, they're, that's going to be something that we're going to see. I have a feeling we're going to see that. And I genuinely hope that they're not as bad, but I don't think that's going to be the case. And I also, want people to realize that it it can we can do better we should be doing better and it takes you to do that like listening to the facts understanding things making the decisions and making the right choices or making the good choices is the only way for us especially to help like mitigate this because guess what? It's not going away on its own. Mm-hmm. We know that. It's not just going to go away. 
the fact that we have the the vaccine now that's great but that's not going to be the be all end all <laughs> we, we, <laughs> like we just... still have millions of people to to, to yeah. get vaccinated yeah yeah and, and not, it... not hundreds not thousands millions hundreds mm -hmm. of millions of people mm -hmm. to get vaccinated and and there's an important thing to know about with vaccination i feel that i really uh, have to say i'm gonna put my work hat on for a moment so what i think some people are going to be misguided by is just because you get vaccinated does not mean you get to run around without a mask mm -hmm. a vaccine will protect you it will not protect others mm -hmm. so if you come into contact with COVID-19 and you have been vaccinated yes there is a very high statistical chance you will not have adverse effects but it does not mean that you won't be a carrier it does mm -hmm. not mean that you will not be an asymptomatic person mm -hmm. most likely you will be asymptomatic you won't have symptoms because your immune system is fighting what there is in you that you've come into contact with but that doesn't mean it's not going to have a chance to kind of spread around and duplicate. And your being around other people means that you can still give it to others. Mm -hmm. That's why vaccination programs, the goal is 100% so that you can literally eradicate mm -hmm. globally this thing that exists. Like you have, like that's the, the uh, medical warfare concept, uh, for lack of a better word that you have to eradicate it. And the only way you get to doing that with, you know, these things across human history is to literally have pretty much 100% vaccination so that there there's no host for it to survive or live in. And that's the yeah. one thing I'm, I'm a little concerned about is that I think some people are going to be like, "Woo, I got vaccinated, party! Like, and it's like, yeah, well, party needs to wait. Uh, <laughs> back, you know. And so that that's going to take a while, and yeah. you know that we're like, I'm I'm hopeful for rollouts, quicker ability for access and stuff. Um, it heartens me to see how many people who are uh, part of the first waves, first wave, first waves um, of getting the vaccine are posting pictures of them getting their shot or their their um, CDC card. You know that has uh, a sidebar girls it's got your personal information on it do you really want to be posted a whole picture of that no no blurring no i don't anyways um <laughs> i'm like hyper vigilant lately about people's other people's security it's driving me crazy they're like you know here's my vaccination card and your full name possibly your date of birth bitch like are you inviting like you know to to get scammed or to you know anyways <laughs> um but love y'all but Come on, like, add the latest trend. All right, I'm just going I'm, I'm, I'm on my soapbox. I got an old man hat on. The latest trend. <laughs> Y'all going out there and tunifying yourself, like taking a, a picture of you and turning it into a cartoon and using a software platform to do that. Did y'all read the terms of service? Like, have you thought about the fact that you just gave your image over to another company and they could turn around and sell it for facial recognition? I'm just saying, like, if you if you use your own software to sort of do it, I can kind of understand that. But these other people um, who I admire and look at and, and you know, love on, on variable degrees uh, that I know and I don't know that well, I'm like, wait, what are you doing? Why are you giving that information to other companies? What are you doing? I, I don't understand. So, yeah. Sorry, I just had a soapbox moment where I was just like, people <laughs> people making decisions to post things online, and it's kind of like, I'm heartened that, like, this is fun, this is cute, like, you know, from a public health perspective, like, woo, I got my first shot, I got my second shot, whatever, you know, and, and, and helping people get comfortable through the familiarity mm -hmm. of, yeah, you know. That it that it's there and look at me and I'm okay, you know, and I'm not having side effects and blah blah blah. So yeah. you should get pricked too. So wrap up, LGBTQ community, quit being messy. Like get your shit together. Just get it together. Get in the box and just like just get it together. Like We're shut all the fuck up. Together. Yeah. We're in this together. Don't fuck it up. Can I get another like <laughs> <laughs> like, can I can I can I get another like catchphrase up in this shit? 
Where are my backup singers? I don't know. Anyway, go. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a deep one. If for anyways, it's for another discussion. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'll talk oh, about it in post show. I can laugh. We'll talk in post show. Anyways, so that's 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 the tea. No shade. Uh, but there's plenty of ways to give us your tea and your lack of shade. Pop over to our website, comes out loud.com. Shoot us an email, comes out loud at gmail.com. Shoot us a voicemail, 361 seal. We'll talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and uh, YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate price of the URL. You can join our entourage chat and spill the tea there at tinygirl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can also find out when we plan on recording these shows by subscribing to our Google Calendar at tinygirl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can uh, also get various accoutrements such as a uh, Sloppy Bone 23 shirt that Gary is wearing. Did you catch that? Yeah. Same. Yeah. Messy. Messy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or a uh, Cubs Out Loud logo shirt, a uh, sweatshirt, t-shirt. Uh, 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 I'm also wearing underneath this a, a sleeveless shirt, different types of shirts. Just select the, <laughs> the thing, and then you can actually select the type of shirt you want. Um, all at Zazzle.com slash, yeah, Zazzle.com slash, uh, comes out loud. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud. Uh, send us a little cash uh, to get us some improvements at, at paypal.me slash comes out loud. Um, you can also uh, rate us and subscribe to us through Apple Podcast. Uh, Google Play, Spotify, uh, uh, Amazon, Audible. Um, you can find me anywhere on the internet as box set, box puppet, box got box something or other, or Windgem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch. Which you'll be appreciated if you followed me there. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me anywhere. Uh, well, most bear sites as Theater Cub 79 are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. Twitter is not safe for work. Yeah. If you would like to uh, follow me online, um, I can be found pretty much anywhere as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Shout for now. <laughs>